tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are lying in a wartime prison camp, surrounded by a desperate and brutal enemy. While your own forces are slowly approaching to save you, your frightened captors plan to kill you. Listen now as Escape brings you Anthony Ellis' exciting story, Four Went Home. Poker to be honest. Come on, come on. Dutch? One. Wouldn't you know it's drawn to an inside straight. He'll never learn. <laughs> be good, baby. Be good. Sap. Be good. Oh, I'm happy. I'll play these. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of bull. Listen to him. Play these. <laughs> bull. How about you, Curse? Me? I'm honest. Three. <laughs> oh, honest. Oh, great. Oh, I'm honest. <laughs> and the dealer takes uh, a one? Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, who bets? Uh, first bet. Of course you. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm thinking. I check. There were five of us reading around the floor clockwise. Jerry Mitchell, infantry. He was the kid. The Nazis got him at the bulge. He'd seen a lot of war and he was sick because of it. He was a good kid. Mitch? I'll sit and uh, raise a half. Oh, hat. wait a minute. Kid. Next to him, Armstead. Henry Dutch oh, Armstead, infantry. Hair? He'd been in the bulge, too, along with Mitch. He was from Pennsylvania. He used to play football. Fact is, he made a career of it for seven years. Went from school to school, south and west. Called himself a football bum. His pal was Mitch. Dutch was okay. A big guy. Dutch? I'll call. Took one and then Sandy Saperstein. Dark, wiry sap. Machine gunner. He taught math in a small upstate New York school and turned in his uniform somewhere in Belgium. A quiet man. Sap? Call and raise 50. Raise 50? And then there was Curcio. Andy Curcio, kid from Danbury. Look at your card. He had a job in a hat factory waiting for him when he got home. Of course, he had been blown out of his tank, which is lucky for him. The other guys didn't do so well. And Curcio never forgot it. He was still fighting the war, even a prison camp. Curcio? Ah, bull. I'm out. What have you got, Dutch? Bullets and dolls. Three deuces, three. That uh, beats me. I have a small straight. Oh. Straight to what, Sap? To the eight. Ah, it's tough. Mine goes to the ten. Oh, oh bull. Ever see fine. anything like that? <laughs> Write it down, will you, Sam? Oh, yes, I got it. <clears throat> Three eighty-five for Sergeant Nestor. Sergeant Nestor. <laughs> Give him a good shuffle, huh? Oh, sure, sure. Anything for uh, you. Put shuffle. him away, fellas. There goes the lights. Uh, oh, always a Oh, well, another day, another dollar. Got a raise, huh, Sam? Ah, oh. funny, ah, funny. Oh, oh, funny. Oh, oh, you oh, write oh, your oh, material, oh, Dad. <laughs> Saturday night. Saturday poker game with the guys. We knew it was Saturday because we kept score of the days on the calendar. You didn't count days, you kept score with them. And the game was to see who was going to win. You were the days. I guess as prison camps go, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was nothing. The Nazis didn't talk to us much and we didn't talk to them. All except Curcio. 
And we had to watch him because he loved to shoot off his mouth. The next hour or so, I lay in my bunk thinking... thinking about Junie and home. I figured most of the others were asleep until the pair of legs swung down from the bunk above and dropped to the floor next to me. It was Sapper Steve. You sleep, Sarge? Mm-mm. Hey, listen, I got an idea. Not again? No, I think this one will work. No, knock it off, Sappy. Get some sleep. Oh, wait a minute. Look. What's that? I found it last week. A piece of coat hanger. Yeah, but it's all twisted. I know. I did it. I think I can open the door with it. Unlock the door with that? Uh-huh. I tried it. When? Last night when you were all asleep. I didn't have time to get it open because I heard the guard coming, but I think it'll work. Here, let me see that. Here. You see, the lock's old-fashioned. Mitch? Yeah. One of those dreams again, I guess. The kid doesn't look too good. Yeah, I know. Come on. What are you going to do? See if we can work the door. How long ago did the guard pass you here? About ten minutes. That gives us five more then before he comes back. Hey, what do you think, Sarge? We can make a break? Well, let's wait and see if we can open it. Okay, go ahead. It's got the catch somewhere on the bottom. I felt it last night. You haven't told the other guys, have you? No, no sense getting them all excited. Yeah. Come on. It was cold standing at the door. We were always cold in the camp, but that night I noticed it more. Saperstein worked away with this bit of wire, his tongue sticking out between his teeth in concentration. About four minutes must have passed when... I got it. All right, try the knob. Close it, quick. Guard's coming. Can you lock it again? I think so. He might have heard Mitch. Sarge, I can't get it to catch. No, cut it out. He'll hear. Stop it. I can. It took another ten minutes to lock it, and both of us were sweating before it was done. Sap and I agreed that I should talk to the guys in the morning after inspection and see if we could work out a plan. I figured the best way would be at exercise. Mitch was cleaning up the room, and Sap was playing handball with fellas from another unit, so there was just Armstead and Curcio and me. It was too cold to sit, so we walked up and down the enclosure. As cold as witch's nose. Man, you're not just kidding. Look, I want to tell you guys something. Yeah, what is it, Sarge? Uh, Saperstein and me got the door open last night. Oh, you're kidding. You unlock the door. Keep it down, will you? Now, look. From what we hear, our guys are about 80 miles west. Maybe. Okay. Now, if they get closer... We gotta take a chance one way or the other. Well, let's get out of here. That or try and figure what the Nazis will do to us if they think our guys are gonna spring us up. Yeah, I've been thinking about that plenty. There's more than a thousand of us in here. I've done it before. Gas, machine guns. Well, that's the chance. Then. What about the fence? You think we could get over? Might. Yeah, but it's electrified. Not over there, Curcio. Not by the gate. Oh, Paul, that's right under the tower. They'd see us before we got anywhere near the searchlight. That's what I mean. That's the chance. All right with me. Sure. I'll talk to the other guys later, though. Oh, uh, hey, hey, what about Mitch, though? I don't know. How do you think, Dutch? Well, he goes with. Sure he does. You think he can make it? He's in bad shape, Dutch. He might blow up. No, no, no. You leave that to me. The kid's okay. He's just a little nervous. He's okay. He can make it. When do we try it, Sarge? Tonight. 
Might as well tonight. Oh, boy, wouldn't that be something? Get my hands on a gun again. Oh, boy, I'll get me a couple of more Nazis before this war is over. Yes, swell, you do that. Come on, we better get back with the others. Hey, you see over there? Yeah. Bombers. Yeah. Give it to them, good boys. The Lancasters. Oh, they're ours. Uh, Lancasters. A buck. Okay, a buck. What do you say, Sarge? <laughs> you didn't learn much in aircraft recognition, did you? They're Lancasters. Oh, bull. <laughs> We'd thought of breaking out before, but it never came to anything, mostly because it couldn't be done in daylight. There was no sense trying to dig, either, on account of the rock underneath. We'd found that out a long time back. But now, with a key, it was different. We didn't get a chance to talk together again until just before final inspection and lockup. Mitch was the big problem, and I put it up to him the way it was. That's great, fellas. Count me in. You think you're up to it, Mitch? Me? Sure. Of course. He's taking a big chance, kid. He'll be all right, I tell you. Now, wait a minute, Dutch. Let him decide for himself. Now, we want you to go, Mitch, but if you don't feel like you can make it, we can fix it so you won't get in any trouble if we leave you. How? How are you going to fix it? How we can knock him over the head, and then he can tell him that he tried to stop us. Hey, that'll work. That's swell. How about that, Mitch? What's the matter with you guys? I'm coming with you. I'm okay, honest. He's coming. Oh, watch out for him. He's coming, that's all. All right. All right, knock it off, inspection. Hi, you liver. Shut, Shut up, Chris. Everything okay, yeah? So help me, Curcio. You pull something like that again, I'm gonna bust you wide open. Ah, bully's just a stinking nut. That's enough, for Curcio. Well, what do you say, fellas? It's Midnight? okay with me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, if we get out, we start heading west. Make as much time as we can before it gets light. Then hide out until tomorrow night. With luck, we ought to meet our guys along the way. Well, what happens if they pull back? Uh, maybe the guard who said they were 80 miles away was giving us the needle. Well, well what about that? Well, listen, what about it? But maybe they want us to make a break so they can have an excuse to... Take it easy, kid. You see what I mean? We'll keep on walking until we find them. We'll find them, Mitch. Don't worry. Hey, hey, fellas, how about poker? You know, celebration last night? What do you say? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's okay. Fine. 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 But break them out, Sap. Uh, I, I feel lucky tonight. We will return to escape, and tonight's story, Thor went home in just a moment. Daily, the broadcasts of Radio Free Europe and Radio Free Asia strike through the Iron Curtain, bringing the truth about the free world to the captive peoples behind it. Help send a message by giving to the 1952 Crusade for Freedom. And now, back to Escape. We played poker badly. Every one of us looked at cards and thought of something else. I guess Mitch was the worst. He was really scared. And Mitch hadn't always been a scared guy. He talked a lot about what he was going to do when he joined up with our fellas. Talked about his girl and home and too many things because we knew he was scared, we let him go on talking. 
and then it was lights out. I made the guys lay down on their bunks. Nobody was going to sleep for sure, but a rest wasn't going to hurt. It was a little after nine. Say, uh, say, say Dutch? Uh? Uh, what was the score when you played Pan? When I played with who? Um, uh, Tech. Oh. Tech, the year you went to the ball. 34 to 6. We won. Yeah, that was right. 30, 34 to 6. 34. Yeah. Boy, what a slug. Got my beak busted in that one. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Mitch. The kid, you okay? Me? Sure. Yeah. Where'd it go? That's a boy. Hey, what's the time, Sarge? Not even 9.30. Lots of time. Take it easy. Sure. I found myself singing a song under my breath, over and over, the way you sometimes do, you know. I knew it backwards. I remember seeing a movie with Junie at home and all the little things that happened that night. The movie, the coke afterwards. Everything except the name of the song. Hey, huh? what is it, Sarge? Uh, uh, fellas, what's the name of this? Da, 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 da. Oh, gee, I, I, it's on da, the tip of my tongue. Da, 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 da. I can't. Uh, uh, you must remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kiss uh, is just a hey. Yeah, kiss hey. is just a kiss. Boy, it's more than that. Hey, hey. I know. Time goes by. No, as time goes as by. Time goes yes, by. time goes by. You remember Bergman? Boy. Yeah. You know, my wife, Junie, is Swedish, and you know how the Swedes say Ingrid Bergman? Huh. No, how? <laughs> Ingrid Bergman. No kidding. Yeah. Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> you think we'll get out, Sarge? You think? We'll get out. Listen, the fellas... If anything happens... Uh, nothing. Then... Nothing is going to happen, kid. Sure, I, I know. But but if it does... Will you tell my folks? Nothing's going to happen, Mitch. Mitch, why don't you stick it out here? Huh, kid, you'd be okay and yeah, nobody... No, I'm... I'm fine. M maybe a little nervous, you know. Sure, sure. Maybe you guys think I'm chicken, huh? Oh, no, kid, you're no. okay. Just Listen, I got some poker money to collect from a couple of you, and don't forget. <laughs> How am I going to forget? I'll be busted for ten years paying off what I lost in here. What's the time, Sarge? Ten thirty. Ten thirty. The guard passed our door every fifteen minutes. I counted from nine o'clock. And he was coming back for the sixth time. And he had passed six more times. And then we'd go. I thought about Mitch and the others. <laughs> Talk about the flip of a coin. This was it. You give a guy three stripes on his sleeve and he does the thinking for the rest. And if he thinks wrong, what about that? There was still time to call it off. And there was still time when it was a couple of minutes to 12. Stay in the camp and maybe the Nazis wouldn't get sore enough to knock us off because our fellas would release us. Yeah, maybe. How do you look at a man's face and know what he's got in his mind? A Nazi's face. A Nazi's mind. Okay. All set, huh? Hold it down. Now we'll wait until the guard passes at 12, and then, Sap, you get to the door and get it unlocked in a hurry. Yeah. Why not unlock it now, Sergeant? We could be good. No, no, ready. we can't take a chance. I want it quiet. Real quiet. 
You understand? Yes, yes. Stay in your box until I say. You ready, Sap? Yeah. Okay. Twelve coming up. Now. He's late. Of all the nights, knock it out. He would. Coming, Sam. Shut up, curse you. <laughs> I missed it. I'm sorry, Sarge. Take your time. Take it easy. It keeps bending when I put on too much pressure. It's okay. Just take your time. You'll get it. Yeah. <sighs> you sure? Yeah. All right. We go now, Sarge. Now stay single file. When we get out of the building, get as close as you can to the wall. We'll have to time the searchlight as we go, Curcio. Yeah. You bring up the rear. Give the signal to drop when you see it. I'll do the same in front. Okay. What about the gate, Sarge? I told you. We make a run for it. Get over one by one each time the light passes. Now, let's go. Sap opened the door. We went out into the corridor. It was crazy. I kept thinking how crazy it was as we moved along to the entrance of the building. Curcio was last. Saperstein was in front of him. And then Armstead. And Mitch. And myself. I could hear the kid breathing behind me. Quick, jumpy breaths like he was winded from running. And then we were outside in the enclosure. The light down! We flopped to the ground. And that bright watchdog looked right over us. And beyond cutting through the dark. Okay. They'll see us. They'll, they'll see us. Shut up, Mitch. You're going to be okay, kid. And we went another ten yards. Past another building. And down again. As the searchlight made a return trip. We were about a hundred yards from the gate when we stopped and crowded into a narrow alleyway between the cookhouse and a shed. From there on, it was open country across the enclosure to the gate fence. And that was going to be tough. The guard's tower was almost directly in front of us. What's next, Sarge? Take off your boots. Tie them around your neck. The less noise, the better. That's a good idea. Okay, Sarge. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. And you, Mitch, Dutch, Sap, and Curcio. All right with you? Yeah. Okay. But, oh, bull. Oh, no. Gates open. Boy, how I'd like to get through there. They must think we already got over. Hey. I don't get it. The searchlight stopped. They left the gate open. What the devil's going Beats on? me. Can you see anybody up on the tower? Wait a minute. No. Nobody. What do you think, Sarge? I don't know. But maybe we won't have to go over the gate. 
A kid, all right, Dutch? Dutch? Kid! Hey, what's with him? He pass out? He... He just suddenly didn't move anymore. The kid's dead. He just... went kind of limp. You big crazy... You choked him. You killed him. I did. I did. I didn't. I wanted him to keep quiet, that's all. Well, you saw that, Sarge, didn't you? I just tried to keep him quiet. Yeah. He's dead. Hey, what do you say, Sarge? We can't stay here, huh? Okay. I'm going across. If I get through, follow me one at a time. We walked across to the gate. It was dark. There wasn't a sound. There wasn't a Nazi around. Dutch came last, carrying the kid. I guess it wasn't more than ten minutes later along the road that we saw the first of our tanks. Patton's tanks. Then we knew why we'd been able to walk out of the gate. We kept moving back and we didn't say anything. Not until we got to a medical outfit and left Mitch's body with him. And the four of us just kind of stood around waiting for somebody to take us back west. Gee, if we waited ten minutes. Yeah, just ten. He was a good kid. It wasn't your fault, Dutch. It could have happened to anyone. Sure, it breaks, I guess. It's not your fault, Dutch. <laughs> It's okay, Dutch. Well, come on, you guys. We can't find any cigarettes just standing here. We'll just be a couple of minutes. We'll meet you back here, Dutch. Yeah, Dutch, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Escape has brought you Four Went Home, written and directed by Anthony Ellis, starring William Conrad as the sergeant. Featured in the cast were John Daner as Olmstead, Peter Leeds as Curcio, Bob Sweeney as Mitch, and Jack Crucian as Saperstein. Editorial supervision is by John Meston, and the special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... Crawling across a jungle savanna, your body flaming with fever, while behind you lies certain death, and ahead, the endless tortures of perpetual imprisonment. So listen next week when Escape brings you Evelyn Waugh's classic story, The Man Who Liked Dickens. <laughs> Tomorrow night, Lux Radio Theater adapts an Academy Award winner, The African Queen, bringing you Humphrey Bogart in his original role, co-starring Greer Garson. Also tomorrow on most of these same CBS radio stations, listen for Lloyd Nolan in a story titled The Man with Two Heads on Suspense. Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>